start you guys off right away with our first project. Uh, this is a self uh, portrait that we're going to start off with. And it's an unusual portrait because it's a portrait of a cyborg with, of course, a tip of the hat to Isaac Asimov is the title of this lesson plan. And we have a number of examples around the room. This can be a really cool way to do a self-portrait. We could start with, say, a school portrait. And no, nope, you don't get to see an old school portrait of mine today. Instead, you're going to see my, my sweet little daughter, Maddie, here. So this is the one I'm going to use. Now, you guys, um, have we had a chance to go to the materials table yet? No. OK. You guys are going to go to the materials table. And because, of course, I can't get a head and shoulder shot of you guys to turn yourself into a robot, instead, we've provided you guys with some celebrity images. <laughs> All right, so you got your stuff, and you got, you've got your image. One of the ways that you can uh, get a silver background going, and I just want to show you guys this one right here. You can see glue lines. So once the image was glued down, then I took the bottle of glue and traced over some of the main image lines with the glue bottle. I also did a little bit of texture in areas where the image didn't appear. Okay, so this is just one way that you could do it, and then you have to let it dry. So this takes a little bit more time, obviously. You've got to have a two-day process instead of one or, or less. But the good thing about this is you can use a lightweight foil, because I know a lot of you will probably use aluminum foil to do this. So you could use a lightweight foil. You can glue it down wrap it around the edges, and then what I like to use is a watered down glue. So I have a mixture here. It's about 50-50 water and glue, so it's a little bit more fluid, and we won't get the uh, dimension with it that way. But I would just kind of brush that over the entire thing once it's dry, and then take my aluminum foil and push it down, and just kind of use my fingers, and you can see how you can pick up those glue lines. All right, in your package, you also have a piece of foil. And it's a very lightweight foil. This comes on a roll. It's alu foil is what it's called. And then you're going to place your image. I'll put my Mona over the top of this. That lesson plan brochure, you can use magazines, newspapers, just when you're embossing, it's a good idea to have something underneath there that's a little bit soft so that uh, it's not the hard table underneath it. This pen has, you'll notice, a really thick, old school ballpoint to it. Not one of those super sharp, super fine ones that's going to cut through the foil and cut through the paper. This is the old school ballpoint pen. It has a nice, sturdy, round nib to it. Now, if you just trace over some of the main lines of your image, you're going to have to hold it in place. So then I'm going to take that off, and you can see there's my image that I'm going to go by. I'm just going to cover my surface with a little of this tacky glue. The foil probably doesn't fit exactly on there the way it comes off the roll. And I'm just going to smooth that gently down. Yeah, we had we have somebody over here who flipped this so that instead of the lines being debossed into the aluminum, then you can flip it in the, over and the lines will be raised then instead. So there's an option. All 
All right, so this is the structure part here. Now we get into the fun choices that we have. All right, so we want to add color probably first of all. Um, we, I brought with a few of our Blick Studio markers. These have a brush tip on one end, and this brush tip is really great for coloring in large areas quickly. I also sent a Sharpie marker with everybody. You guys found that in your bag. You know, it's kind of nice then to be able to go and trace over maybe some of those lines or add a few more details uh, with a black marker. And then wires are a great thing that we can use. Wires can be glued down. Wires can be poked through the surface. In the middle of our tables, everybody, we've got some uh, push pins. Push it in and just kind of move it around, widen it a little bit. And through those holes, you can insert some of these twisty wires. So those can kind of weave in and out of the canvas or out of the surface. Those can be used to attach other parts, robot parts, on there. We've got some more colored foil here. This is origami paper, so it's cut into square pieces here. Now, say if I wanted to use this to make Mona's hair red, what I would do is I'd bring back my, my image, I'd place it back over that foil part, and then I'd kind of just trace around again. <coughs> And I'd get the piece the size I want it to be with the foil, and then I can glue that right down. So what other things can you think of that we can use? We've got beads, of course. We've got some silver metallic beads. Sequins, you know, you can find some great round and shaped sequins that can look like robot parts. Um, if you go outside of your your regular art materials cabinet, uh, you might find things like uh, jewelry parts or hardware, nuts, actual nuts and bolts and things like that that you can glue onto this. And we had a lot of fun uh, bringing together, oh, we've got these tube things here. These tubes are, you can buy these in a package where you get a number of varied shapes and sizes of tubes. On some of these samples, I uh, rated some of the old jewelry parts that I had laying around. <coughs> Sewing notions, some snaps, hooks, things like that out of the sewing cabinet. There's just, there's so much in the way of uh, electronics, you know? What happens to all those old electronics? You know, they go to the junkyard. What a shame, but what can we do with them? Well, here's an idea. Would anybody have any ideas of some materials that perhaps we didn't bring out with us today that you're wishing that you had with you that would be cool to put in with us? Tissue paper. Yeah, you could get some really neat texture and right. There's metallic tissue paper as well too. That would be kind of neat. Yeah. Yes, collage materials so that you could you could do a, a landscape too behind that with maybe some of the you know where do you where would you put your robot? Where do they live? Sand, right, right, maybe. It might be outer space, but it could be a service robot that lives here with us. Yes, yes, and here's another good idea over here is uh, you could take a, one of the, uh, the real thick, heavy types of yarn and trace the yarn, taste the lines with those so that you can get more of a raised texture underneath the foil there as well. This is Maddie as she's completed here. 
Um, you can see the marker was used. We had some metallic paint that was used. Uh, here's the sewing notions, the snaps that I mentioned, and some of those copper tubes and wires and the jewelry parts down here. Um, so it's fun because it looks a little bit like her, but yet it doesn't. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, the materials for this video and all of the instructions plus a PDF are available at dickflick.com.